This is Old Faithful, the Browning heavy machine gun, the biggest and toughest 30 caliber weapon we have, the gun that gives the rifleman continuous close support and protection in battle. It can deliver a large volume of fire. Of course, you can't fire long at the rapid rate, 250 rounds a minute, because in two or three minutes, the gun will be steaming hot. But you can fire the medium rate, 125 rounds a minute, indefinitely. It's a water-cooled, belt-fed, crew-served weapon. Rugged, yet light enough to be carried easily by hand for short distances. Its adjustable mount makes it easy to place in cover and concealment. The low position mount can be used to take advantage of a shallow depression in flat terrain. Or the gun can be mounted with a tripod high, like this. Because of its firm tripod mount, the heavy machine gun can be fired safely over the heads of the riflemen. Even if you can't see your target, the dial on top of the mount, together with the use of the clinometer, makes indirect fire possible. Likewise, by use of data prepared in advance, the guns can be fired accurately at night, through smoke, or at other times of poor visibility. Principally because of vibrations, not all the bullets of any machine gun hit in the same place. They scatter slightly and make a regular pattern. The area in which they hit is known as the beaten zone. And on level terrain at this range of 500 yards, this zone is 140 yards long and one half yard wide. Clearly, because of the shape of the beaten zone, the heavy machine gun does the most damage with enfilade or oblique fire. Suppose your target is this enemy squad position. You're here. If you fire now, your bullets will hit only a small portion of the target. This is frontal fire. But now move the gun toward a flank. You can see how much more of your fire is placed effectively on the enemy position. This is called oblique fire. Now look at an example of enfilade fire. Nearly all your shots land just where you want them, right in among the enemy. Only the slightest amount of traverse is necessary to cover his whole position. Rifle companies have machine guns too, light machine guns. But these move right up with the riflemen. They don't have the ammunition to cover large areas or wide targets. Those are your jobs, and they take lots of ammunition. If you have to hand carry ammunition more than 500 yards, it's hard to keep up an adequate supply. That's why you always use your trucks to get your guns and ammunition as far forward as you can. On the march, the heavy machine guns provide protection against enemy planes. They take positions along the route and leapfrog forward from position to position as the column advances. The heavy machine guns also provide anti-aircraft protection in the approach march. Before an attack, rifle units usually go into an assembly area, and your machine guns move into position around it for anti-aircraft protection. Put them on high ground so you can see planes coming from all directions, and far enough apart so that one enemy bomb won't knock them both out. Camouflage your position at once. Make full use of existing cover. If you can't find a hole or ditch like this, dig in. Don't shoot at planes that just happen to fly over. You'll disclose the assembly area and may give away information vital to the enemy. But if they attack the assembly area, fight them off. Before the attack starts, the battalion commander is assisted in reconnaissance by his staff and by a reconnaissance detail from the heavy weapons company. His fire plan may keep the guns under battalion control, with each platoon firing on a separate target. Or both platoons firing on the same target. Heavy machine gun platoons may sometimes be ordered to support individual rifle companies. 
In support of a rifle company, a platoon fires on targets designated by the commander of the rifle unit it's supporting and never lets the rifle unit get beyond supporting distance. Machine guns are sometimes attached to the rifle unit, usually in an attack through rugged country like this, where it's difficult to keep contact with the rifleman. They move right with the rifle unit and take their orders from its commander as if they were part of his company. After receiving the attack order, the platoon leader with his instrument corporal and a messenger reconnoiters the area assigned. He locates targets he has been told to engage. He picks areas in which each section will place its guns so they can deliver effective fire support. And effective fire support of advancing riflemen depends on your ability to see enemy targets which may halt their advance. If the platoon is not already moving forward, the platoon leader sends a message back to the platoon sergeant to move it forward to the designated off-carrier position. He also lets the platoon sergeant know of his ammunition requirements. Meanwhile, he has the instrument corporal get firing data while he himself figures the safety limits for overhead fire. Now let's see how those safety limits are worked out. From positions in the rear, heavy machine guns support the advance of the attacking riflemen. The riflemen can move forward under this fire until they reach the safety limit, where the fire of the gun is masked. Beyond this line, they would be in danger of being hit by their own supporting fire. So the heavy weapons must cease firing or shift to other targets. From here, the rifle company's light machine guns play an important part until the final hand-to-hand -hand action. The heavy machine gun has a flat trajectory at short ranges. This makes it difficult to support riflemen advancing over level ground. When there's no high ground in the rear, the guns must be moved way back to deliver overhead fire. Normally, poor observation makes this method unsatisfactory. However, there's another way you can deliver effective support, by firing through gaps between attacking units. Extreme care has to be taken, because there's always a chance that the attacking riflemen might move into your field of fire and be hit by their own supporting fire. If the section leaders have not accompanied the platoon leader on his reconnaissance, he gives them their orders now. Once they have their orders, the section leaders move their machine gun crews up toward their firing positions. The trucks are halted in cover at the off-carrier position, which is as close behind the gun positions as the trucks can be brought with safety. From here, the guns are carried up to the firing positions by hand. As you move towards your firing position, don't bunch up to make a target for shells or bullets. Take advantage of concealment. Make sure the enemy can't see you, either from the ground or from the air. The squad leaders, after signaling their men to halt, Join the section leader for orders. The section leader tells them where to place their guns and designates targets. To facilitate ammunition supply, fire control, and continuity of fire, the two guns of the section operate together on the same mission. That doesn't mean they're side by side. They're placed at least 30 yards apart. It's up to the squad leader to choose the exact spot for his gun. Take this position. If you placed your gun here, that tree would block your observation and cut down on your field of fire. So move over a few yards. Now the tree isn't in your way. When the squad leader is satisfied with the position, he has the gun mounted. The enemy will be looking for your guns, and you've got to protect yourselves. So, whenever possible, the gun is set up in defilade. In a position offering partial defilade, like this, the gunner can observe his fire with only the sights and his head exposed to enemy small arms fire. Now move the gun back a few yards, and you get position defilade. 
almost complete cover from small arms fire. In a position like this, the gunner can't see the target, so the squad leader gets a spot where he can see it and adjusts the fire. Cover is vital to your protection. A drainage ditch, a shell hole, even a small depression in the ground will give you some cover. On dry ground, the gun will kick up a dust cloud that will broadcast your position. And when the enemy does locate your gun and starts to get your range, you've got to move and move fast. That's why you have to have an alternate position picked out in advance. A position nearby where you can continue to fire on the same targets. You should have a covered approach to your alternate position. This time, make sure muzzle blast won't give you away. Wet the ground in front of your guns to keep the dust down. Now let's take a bird's eye view and see just when and how you move to your alternate position. From your primary position on this hill, your guns were firing on the target area here. When the enemy discovered your position and shells began falling near the guns, you had to move. The section leader ordered the squads to move quickly along this route, covered by the hill, to the alternate position, where they could still fire their primary mission. Now, suppose in addition to your original job, you've been given a secondary mission. For instance, you've been ordered to place your fire here, whenever the company commander gives the word. Obviously, you can't see or fire on that target from where you are. The hills are in the way. But a study of the terrain indicates that you can get effective observation and fire from this little hill off to the right. So you've already picked out a position on that hill, which you can occupy when you get the word to change from the primary to the secondary mission. This new location is known as the supplementary position. A supplementary position is selected for an entirely new mission you can't handle from either the primary or alternate locations. Primary, alternate, and supplementary positions should be far enough apart to make it pretty certain that any shells the enemy throws at one won't hit either of the others. Now let's see why a covered route of approach is important. If you have one, you can come in like this. If there's little cover and concealment, you crawl in, one at a time, being careful not to expose yourselves. But what if there's no cover or concealment? Here's some open country which the enemy can watch. Your job is to move your guns into position on that ridge to the front and fire this way. Looks tough crossing that open space between where you are and the ridge, doesn't it? Well, this is how to do it when you can't avoid exposure. Mount your gun and wait in cover until the last possible moment. Then, just before the attack, rush your gun forward directly toward the firing position. The idea is to get into position on time, no matter how you have to do it. Once the guns are in position, each squad leader makes sure his gunner knows his target. If necessary, he aims the gun on the target himself. He has the gunner look through the sights. In that way, he can be certain that the gunner understands his mission. With the targets clearly in mind, the gunner checks the safety limit. Now everything's ready for the attack. The platoon leader checks his time. H hour. He signals the section leader. The section leader signals his squads. All guns open up at the same time to surprise the enemy with a sudden, overwhelming concentration of fire. You want to kill as many as you can in the first few bursts and make the rest of them take cover. When you've got the enemy pinned down, there's no need to waste ammunition. Occasional bullets sprayed on his position will make him think twice before he pokes his head out. So cut your rate of fire. This gun has a stoppage. The gunner applies immediate action. If that fails, 
the section leader has the other gun fire faster to cover the target while the first gun is being put back into action. Each squad leader is near his gun, constantly observing its fire. If the gun isn't hitting its target, he must correct it in a hurry. He's alert for signals from the section leader, who is someplace between his two guns, so he can see them, control them, and keep contact with the platoon leader, who controls both sections, looks for new targets, and studies the ground ahead to pick new firing positions and to choose the best routes to them. To give the attacking riflemen continuous close support, you must have constant contact with them. At least one man from your platoon is sent with the rifle unit. He sticks close to its commander. What happens if the advance is held up by something like this enemy machine gun? Well, here's what happens. The rifle company commander uses the man from your platoon as a messenger. He says something like this. That machine gun is slowing up our advance. Get back to your platoon and see what they can do about it. The messenger goes to the platoon leader and points out the target to him. He goes to warn one section while the platoon leader takes the other section. The gunner is told to shift to the new target. and the riflemen get the help they need. But machine gun crews don't just sit around and wait for riflemen to ask for help. They watch constantly, spot danger areas in their section, and estimate ranges to them. Then if a worthwhile target pops up, they're ready for it. As our riflemen close in on the enemy positions, platoon leaders, section and squad leaders, and gunners watch the safety limit carefully. As soon as the foot troops reach it, cease firing. Then shift your fire to pre-designated targets on the flanks or in the enemy rear. The platoon leader normally displaces his platoon forward one section at a time. He orders the sections to move at a given time or on his signal and goes forward with his messengers to reconnoiter routes and positions. Then at the proper time, the section leader of the leading section signals out of action. His section goes out of action and moves forward. The other section takes over all fire missions and stays in position while the first section is moving up. This way you always have two guns in position ready to fire. They're protected against enemy counterattack and each machine gun section covers the other while it displaces forward. At the new position, the leader of the first section gets his orders from the platoon leader and moves his guns into action. Not until this forward section is in its new position with guns trained on the enemy does the rear section go out of action and start moving up. Remember the idea. Whether you're operating under platoon control or alone attached to a rifle unit, while one unit is displacing, the other is always in position to protect it. When you move, move fast. Use all the cover and concealment your route gives you. Keep well separated. While displacing forward, leaders look for gun positions along the route ready to go into action at any instant. 
It pays off when there's a counterattack. The guns already in position can let them have it. But what about the section that's displacing? This section leader can make a quick decision because he has already spotted gun positions. A machine gun doesn't do any good while it's on somebody's back. So the idea is to get it firing and do it fast. That counterattack won't get very far. When our rifle units capture their objective, the machine guns move into position to fire on the enemy and protect the rifle unit while it reorganizes. Get into position fast and get set to take on all comers, both from the air and on the ground. Machine gun units can give support and protection at all times because their reorganization is automatic. When there's a casualty, each man moves up a peg. Company aid men take care of the wounded. That's their job. Let them do it when you're needed at a gun. Learn these things now. To know your own job is not enough. Someday you may find yourself acting as squad leader or section leader, maybe in command of your platoon. If you do, you'll have to remember these things. In selecting your gun position, first of all, make sure you have a good field of fire and good observation. Protect yourself. Use all the cover and concealment you can get. Get into position on time and without being seen. Observe your fire to make sure you hit your target. Keep that gun constantly supplied with ammunition, and don't waste it. Always have your guns in position, ready to fire. And when you move forward to new positions, move fast. Your job is to help the riflemen every minute, and to protect them from whatever the enemy throws at them. Your machine guns are part of a big team. They're important. They can't win battles by themselves, but they can pave the way. They can pin the enemy down so the riflemen can wade in and polish him off.